Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Stephanie Wu with the Contact Lens Institute of Nevada here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I wanted to just share one of the cases from the irregular cornea workshop that we didn't get to go over, but I thought was really interesting. So we had a patient, he was a Hispanic male that had keratoconus in both eyes. So he was diagnosed with keratoconus in 2019 and then he had corneal cross-linking with one of the local eye doctors in Las Vegas, Epi on in 2019. After he had healed up, then they kindly referred him over to me for a specialty contact lens consultation. Without glasses or contacts, he could see 2040 in the right eye and 2100 in the left eye. And he did complain of some ghosting um, and some kind of central uh, vision issues with the right and the left eye. When I looked with the slit lamp, he did have some haze centrally in the right left in the right eye, and he had some stria in the left eye. Very common for keratoconus patients after they have corneal cross-linking. Uh, sometimes their cornea can look just a little bit hazy compared to an eye that hasn't had any surgery. Here's a photo of his topography. So he has a very typical keratoconus pattern. He's got that hot spot inferiorly on both eyes. The left eye you can tell is a little bit irregular compared to the right eye um, and, and a little bit steeper with the K-max. And so that might explain why that eye has a little bit worse vision compared to, to the right eye. So we decided to fit him with a regular scleral lens in the left eye. Uh, and we just, we just pulled one of our fitting sets. It's the Aurora scleral lens from Valley Contacts. 15.8 diameter, 43 base curve, 4.57 sag. And um, with an over-refraction, he was able to achieve 2030 plus two. So that's a big improvement compared to 2100. Going down to 2030 is pretty, pretty awesome vision. But just for fun, I, I recommend to this patient, hey, you know what? We've got this new technology. It's called a higher order aberration lens or higher order aberration optics. And it might help you see a little bit better. We don't know for sure, but, um, but what do you think? So we kind of talked about the pros and cons and, and he said, yeah, sure, you know, I'm, I'm seeing well with this eye, but I'd love to see if I could see even better. So what we did is basically you fit the patient with the scleral lens, just as you would with any scleral lens design. And then the difference is you have to order the lens and then it's made with these little marks on it. So if you look at this picture, this is not the patient. This is uh, from one of my friends, Dr. Braden Lundquist. But you can see on the surface of the scleral lens, you see all those little dots. Those are little dots that the machine registers and it kind of um, captures. So we know exactly where to put the optics of the HOA lens. This is what the device looks like. So it's actually... It's very small, very, it's, it's actually, you could do, it's like a handheld, almost reminds me of like a handheld auto refractor, but super easy. It just connects to either an iPad or a Surface Pro or a small laptop. And then you just plug in the cord to this little device. The patient rests their head and their chin in the chin rest as, as normal. And you basically just capture the images. Those images are just uploaded to the software and then you send everything to the laboratory and then they're the ones that are that are responsible for designing it. So it was a really, really easy process, very simple to use uh, with a lot of instruments. I get frustrated if I if I have to have the patient help me a lot or if it takes me a really long time to capture the images. Uh, in this case, it was it was very easy to use. And they were able to order an HOA lens based off of the, uh, the scan that we took. And with that lens, the patient actually got to 2020 vision. So that's really cool. Going from 2100 down to 2030 is already pretty awesome. And a lot of keratoconus patients are really happy, but just to kind of press 
press things even further just to see if we could get any better vision. Um, with this HOA lens, he was able to get to 2020 vision, which is, is really incredible. This is just kind of um, a visual kind of showing what is going on with his regular scleral lens, like we see, we've seen 2030, and then with the higher order aberration lens, he was seeing 2020. The images that we see in the bottom left are the HOA measurements, um, the wavefront measurements with the LOA lens on the on one side and the uh, higher order aberration lens on the other side. Then on the very right hand side, we see this kind of bar graph. This is showing us the different levels of aberration, all the different, um, the Zernike plot, and it's kind of telling us which areas uh, were improved and, and, and kind of where we could even improve even more. So the different values that you see here in orange, those are the values with the lower order aberration lens. So just a regular spherical scleral lens. And then the values in blue are the HOA lens. Um, so in, in a lot of cases, it actually reduces things even more um, as far as the, uh, the HOA lens compared to the LOA lens than even in this picture. But I think it just kind of shows a visual in some of these areas where, where things really, really shifted. So the final HOA lens should have been displaced, uh, inducing maybe some of these other higher order aberrations. But uh, for some reason, this patient ended up seeing really well with the HOA, HOA lens, maybe correcting for some of these more bothersome types of higher order aberrations. This is a direct comment from him. He says that the vision in his left eye is amazing. I'm able to work on the computer without straining my eyes. I notice the vision in my left eye is better than my right eye, which has just a regular scleral lens. Um, so we fit, we fit his left eye first. The right eye, um, it didn't have any stria and he was able to get to 2020 in a regular traditional scleral lens. So I said, well, you know, to save money um, and so you're not having to come in so often for this, this process, why don't we just go with a regular lens and see how you like it? So even though he does see 2020 in the right eye, he reports that his vision is actually better in the left eye, which is something that you might find with HOA patients uh, when you correct their vision, even though uh, qualitatively it's the same, 20-20 in each eye, but, uh, but the quality itself is, um, is different. So he somehow notices that the vision in the left eye is even better than the right eye. So I think when he comes in again for his annual exam here soon, uh, he might want to switch into the higher order aberration lens for his right eye because his left eye is doing so well. Here's just a few other interesting images. So if you have a pupil diameter uh, at 6.3 millimeters, it's just showing us that Zernike bar plot again. And this is the simulated E. This is really cool on the, on the software. So you can kind of see what uh, the big E would look like with the lower order aberration versus the higher order. You can see the E looks very different. Not that one is necessarily clearer than the other, um, but I guess with the HOA lens, I can kind of tell that there's like three little legs going off of the E, whereas the LOA lens, you can't really, it just kind of looks like a blob. Uh, so it looks slightly better. And with now the pupil's even smaller. So this is another simulated graph showing at 5.3 millimeters what the bar plot is looking like. And then this is the simulated E again. Uh, the LOA lens still looks kind of like a blob. Uh, HOA lens, you can definitely see those three little legs. And then finally with a 4.3 millimeter pupil. So as the pupil gets smaller, some of these um, uh, higher order aberrations decrease or, or diminish or their, their effects aren't as, as noticeable. And you can see that even with the LOA and HOA lens, um, things have come into focus a little bit more. So in conclusion, higher order aberration optics, I think are going to be an, another amazing innovation over the next few years. We're going to be able to add this into scleral lenses and specialty lenses. And uh, I'm really excited to see how the future of these lenses progresses. If you have any questions about this case or anything else, you can always reach me on my website, which is drstephaniewu.com. Or you can always email me, drwu at clinevada.com. 
happy to answer any questions you have and really happy to share this type of information with you. Thanks.